but it took the matter from day one, from the beginning, ab initio, to say you were not even qualified to have contested this election because you are not the product of a proper primaries by PDP under section 87 of section 1. Therefore, there were no elections. As far as we are concerned, PDP did not have a candidate. So if PDP did not have a candidate, then there was no election. Chief, if that was the feeling of the tribunal, all he should have done is to say, I hereby order a fresh election between the two. Not to say you should take from one and give to the other. That, that was where the tribunal so sorted. And I can assure just, you... Just very quickly, that let the, us bring the, in the, this the other aspect. That judgment. I'm okay. sorry. Chief Ozekobe, let's bring in the uh, aspect of INEC again, INEC's testimony that, uh, it, you know, it is very key here. If INEC uh, testified uh, to the primaries of the PDP not being part of the primaries, not having an idea of what went down with that particular primaries. Now, we're talking about internal affairs of the party, which is the PDP. How, how uh, valid would you say uh, is the testimony from INEC? Uh, on this particular matter because it would seem as if that was one of the big points for the judgment leading up to this particular judgment well like i said because i'm not one of the lawyers in the matter i did not have the privilege the opportunity of seeing the documents which were produced by INEC, by pdp and by epc so as to know uh, what went on or what did not go on that is why I've taken the argument beyond that, because that would be left to the lawyers to argue that INEC itself was wrong to have even said there were no proper primaries. But like I've said, my own humble interpretation of Section 85, Subsection 2 of the Electoral Act, where the word may was used as against the word shall. If you look at Section 141, 142, 143, 143, you will see the act using shall, shall, shall. Shall in law means compulsory, mandatory. You must, you must do this. But when in law, in interpretation of statutes, the act uses the word may, it means that this is permissive. permissive. Oh, this is, you may not, you may not do it. This is not obligatory. It's not mandatory. So in my own humble interpretation, I will say that I next attendance at a political party's primary is even not compulsory because the act says it may decide to attend and observe with or without prior notice to the, that political party. In other words, like Nicodemus in the night, INEC can even decide to sneak in a political party which after giving 21 days notice, mind you, is to give 21 days notice under 85-1, to honor that, look, we are going to have a Congress. We are going to have a convention. We want you to come and monitor us to make sure that we are having internal democracy. Even after that, INEC can decide to sneak in, like Nicodemus in the night, to go and watch what the political but, party but, is doing. But, 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 My own interpretation of that is that the act is seeing the issue of primaries as an internal affair of a political party, but wanting righteousness to live above board like Caesar's wife. So that there will be internet you it, I couldn't they sneak decide in. to say the umpire INEC should go and watch. Quickly so here, INEC uh, has to watch this time. And his testimony is that where we didn't see any primary. That was why I drove the argument beyond that to say let us even assume that the tribunal uh, and was if, if, And if you put it to what the parties, uh, the, uh, onto the party's response that the primary is actually held but not in Taraba State, it was moved to Abuja. Uh, Owing to security reasons, how does that also well go with well, the, to me, the, the act? To, yes, to me, to me. Can I go? On? Go ahead. Yeah, to me, the issue under the electoral act, for example, if you look at it, even the tribunal itself, sat in Abuja here, where we are, where I'm speaking from, the electoral act says a tribunal should sit at the very venue of the state where an election has taken place, the gubernatorial election. So in Taraba, what's the capital of Taraba? That should have been uh, uh, Jalingo. The tribunal ought to have sat in Jalingo. But you and I know, and all Nigerians know, <coughs> excuse me, that the tribunal sat throughout in Abuja. 
for security reasons. They called it security reasons. In other words, the environment in Jalingo was not conducive enough for it to see due to the political temperature measured by the barometer, which right. was too high. Now, PDP's own argument is that, look, we did hold our primaries. Yes, not in Jalingo, but because of the political temperature, which was also heated up, which was also very hot, as hot as the furnace of, of, hair, of hair fire, we also decided to shift it to Abuja. Like I said, that is a matter of evidence. That's a matter of evidence. Yeah. Will the Court of Appeal will look at? All right, Chief. We, to, pardon uh, me to, to put in. We have to wind down. Because, but me... because if you say that PDP was wrong in holding the primaries in Abuja okay. instead of Jaligo due to security reasons, then you can also fault the tribunal immediately. All right. Like yeah, let's, wrong. Let's I've sat quickly... in Abuja instead of Jaligo because let's... the ad says it should sit in Jaligo. All right. Let's quickly get your response on this one before we wrap up. Uh, because when you say that the Electoral Act says, or the law says, look, uh, INEC may, they didn't use the word shall. But yes. going through uh, Section 138.1 of yes. the Electoral Act that talks about the grounds of which an election could be petitioned or grounds of petition, yeah. 1A there, 1 says an election may be questioned on any of the following grounds. That is to say, yeah. A, yeah. that a person whose election is questioned was at the time of the election not qualified to contest the election. Yes. Which is the grounds upon which the tribunal found that, well, since you were not, you shouldn't have it in the first place. Yes. Yeah, no. I have, no, I have no problem with that. There are many grounds. May, you can take any of them. That all those grounds under Section 138, you can go to tribunal under any of them. That the person did not have the right qualification mm -hmm. under Section 177 of the Constitution, that there were massive irregularities. There were manipulations, uh, ballot box snatching, ballot paper sna uh, snatching, uh, uh, wrong collation. Oh, there are so many reasons that there was what we call an uh, enticement of uh, voters to vote uh, during the voting exercise, or that people brought in talks to disrupt. All those are grounds. So they, they have gone on, on several grounds, and it is this ground of not having the necessary qualification that the tribunal ruled upon, right. on the ground that the necessary qualification this time has nothing to do with his papers. They are not saying under Section 177 that he was not a Nigerian, that Darius was not 35 years old, or that he did not obtain a school certificate or the equivalent. They are saying he did not possess one of the four qualifications, which All is right. that he belonged to a political party, but that he was not the product, he was not validly nominated All by right. that political party, the PDP. Okay, that, is, that is the ground. All but right, I, we, I we. took my argument beyond that ground to say, let us give all this to the tribunal. To say, sir, you were right. You were right in all this A, B, C, D. You were right. But the argument I have anchored it firmly on, after finding all this, what should you do? What right. should be the we, we, we get that what point. Be your verdict? All right, that, is, that is the issue. The verdict should be go and hold a fresh election. All not right, that we, you should we take have... the certificate from Darius and give, give to uh, Aisha. That was wrong. And I can tell you, I believe, that the Court of Appeal will set aside that judgment. All it right. was a poor, bad judgment. Chief uh, Mike. Bereft of serious research. Chief Mike Ozeko, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, thank you for talking to us today. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you. All right, appreciate yeah. you, Nigeria. God bless.